What up? <laughs> hey, I promise I'll never open a video like that again. This is Giant Keeper 19600 and I literally just got done recording the last video, and I thought, I might as I'm gonna do another review, <laughs> because, ah, <laughs> oh my gosh, feels. And, um, yeah, I, uh, also, I just want to do it now while it's still fresh in my mind, because the last one I waited a little bit, and, well, it was, some people said I still got some good points, thanks, but, uh, it was probably better to just do it right away. Okay, so I just saw the episode. It was a clip show. I did not think it would be a clip show. Um, usually Transformers Prime, like, I noticed this with Grill, they sort of hide when they do clip shows. Like, you don't know it's going to be a clip show until you watch it, which is probably a good thing because if you knew, you probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> but as far as clip shows go, this one was really good. <laughs> because, because Megatron and Starscream's commentary was beautiful <laughs> and wonderful. And Knockout, too. It, I, you know what I'd love? This has nothing to do with the episode, but it has like something very vaguely to do with the episode, but I would love like Mystery Science Theater with Megatron, Starscream, Knockout. <laughs> it's totally silly, it makes no sense. I feel like that would be hilarious. Just to have pop them down in front of a movie and just have them bicker while they're watching. Yes. Okay, anyway. Okay, a lot of things were brought up in this episode, even though it was a clip show, or maybe because it was a clip show. It's easier to bring these things up again in case, you know, kids, like, this isn't meant for, like, little kids, but, like, in case, you know, kids who are more casual and who don't plop themselves down in front of YouTube every week fanatically to watch this, um, they might have forgotten some stuff. So, like, yeah, it brought up a lot of points that, um, I was kind of <laughs> hoping they'd bring up soon. Like, the thing about... Uh, how Knockout was willing to betray Megatron. I was, like, wondering, uh, that's, a, like, a cool part of his character. Well, not a cool part, but, like, an interesting part of his character. Where did that go? That comes up again. Um, that came up again tonight. And then the whole thing with, like, I'd been making jokes up to this point, like, Dreadwing's, like, he's like, oh, I'm here because the Autobots killed my brother. It's like, yeah, don't tell him about the zombie thing. I was joking, but now he's found out about the zombie thing, and he knows Starscream is the one who actually killed him. Like, the, uh, he's the one who resurrected him and who's the one who, like, abandoned him, basically, to fight with the Autobots and, like, you know, resurrected him as a zombie. And it's like, and someone, like, pointed out, I think it was either on Tumblr or on the YouTube comments, that that, this whole, Skyquake's whole relationship with Dreadwing puts that event in a totally new perspective. Like, when Skyquake first showed up, we just thought, oh, here's some guy. He's kind of bulky. He's cool. He's got a really awesome gun. Oh, he's dead now. Oh, okay. Well, Starscream sure is a prick. You know? And then we were more focused on Starscream sort of leaning home erotically over Megatron. But we sort of forgot... We didn't completely forget about Skyquake, but we didn't really think as much about him. Now suddenly here's Dreadwing, this uh, loved one he has, because Dreadwing clearly loves Skyquake. I mean, he's his twin brother. And all the feels... He shows in this episode, of course, you know, he's very, they were very close, obviously. And, like, see him, like, the, the look on his face when he finds out the, what happened to Skyquake and whose fault it was. It's like this anguished, angry look. And I'm, like, swaying back and forth like a little girl. I don't care. And it's, it's it was very, um, sad. <laughs> you know, I, I just laughed, but that's because I, I don't know how else to, first of all, story good storytelling makes me really happy. Second of all, it's, it was, yeah, it was really tragic, and suddenly that whole event with Starscream resurrecting Skyquake, who wasn't just some toy, who wasn't just some muck, he was a person with a brother who loved him very much, and who you totally disrespected Starscream, and left him forever in limbo. And he never... That's how, what the reward for his loyalty and his hard work. And now I feel kind of bad for laughing at him when he tried to put Starscream's arm on. Ugh, wonder what Dreadwing have to say about that. So, yeah, you know, the perspective changed on that. I think that the trope is called Harsher in Hindsight, which I definitely think there's a lot of hindsight here because it's a clip show. A good clip show shouldn't just be showing you stuff like, remember that? Oh, I remember that. That was good. You should, like, get new perspective on it. And this episode really gave you a new perspective on some stuff. And I think it did change things. Like, you know, Transformers and John, which I will always go to when talking about poor storytelling. They had clip shows just to have clip shows. <laughs> like, nothing changed in the course of the episode. It was just a clip show. Here we go. We ran out of budget for this few episodes, so here's some clips. Here you go. You know, it was, it was pointless shit. And 
it was awful. But here, there's actually a point to it. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even notice at the time, like, Megatron's line about how memories can't be changed. He says that as Starscream's dancing in front of them. <laughs> in front of the Eraticons. So, like, that totally canically happened because it was a memory. It wasn't just an imagined spot. Like, I guess memories don't work, like, the way they do in real life with this cortical psychic patch, or maybe it's just that robot memory doesn't work the same, because, like, human memories, you never remember something exactly how it happened. And apparently robots do, and Starscream remembered himself totally getting jiggy with it in front of the Eraticons, yo. And, uh, that's... It is turning into a meme, by the way. I knew it would be. I checked Tumblr. <laughs> it's like, oh, Starscream, you dork. I always love that when characters in um, fiction who are supposed to be, like, badass or really smart or whatever remind us that they're just massive dorks underneath, um, that they're one of us, essentially. <laughs> one of us. Hand gesture. Okay. Oh, my gosh. What else? Uh, yeah, the change in animation since the show started was really highlighted here. Um, the, um, hmm, what else? Oh yeah, I haven't had any humans for a while. And I know this is like a Decepticon-only episode, but I miss the humans. I mean, where are they? They got moved when Soundwave targeted Raph's house, but like, he only targeted Raph's house. You're not kicking them out of the show, are you? And no, I... I that doesn't seem likely. But, yeah, I, I kind of like them around more, please. <laughs> could they participate in the finale? Jack played a huge role in the finale last time. Could he Could he do that for this season finale? Speaking of seasons, someone did ask me if I'd seen the season three thing for uh, Beast Hunters yet. I have no idea what that's about. I will only say this. The trailer was didn't really have a whole lot of stuff. I assume they're still work making the episodes. But I did hear a long time ago that the Dinobots would be appearing in the series eventually. So these are probably Dinobots. And some people are saying, no, it can't be the Dinobots because Wheeljack created the Dinobots. I personally think that's a really stupid thing to say. A, because things don't have to happen exactly as they happen in G1. I mean, half the shit that happens in the show never happened in G1 in any way. And uh, B, the D Dinobots have been created in other ways besides Wheeljack before, like an animated, and come to think of it, that's the only other show that had Dinobots, but Wheeljack had nothing to do with their creation in that one. So, like, yeah, it, it doesn't have to happen the same way as it did in G1. Um, hmm. Since they're doing Beast Hunters, you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see some more Beast Wars homages, because, like, Beast Wars is one of the best Transformers shows. Uh, and, um, yeah, I would really like to see them, if not, like, copy Beast Wars, I don't think any Transformer show should really copy other shows. I feel like they should, like, use each show as, to borrow a zero punctuation analogy as, like, a springboard to get to something better, you know, to keep improving itself and, like, keep, to maybe borrow ideas from other shows, but ultimately every time be new or, like, newer. And, um, so, but, yeah, I hope for some Beast Wars stuff. Um, Arachnid will probably come back for that. Hopefully, eventually. <laughs> Please. Like, I don't like Arachnid, but I sort of want her around because I feel like she didn't really get closure on her arc. Or at least RC hasn't really gotten closure yet. Um, on that. Maybe Arachnid will target Smokescreen and then RC will have to protect him and maybe they'll have like a, like a close call. Um, sort of like she kind of did already, so maybe they won't do that. But, um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Fan reaction. I always love hitting Tumblr after I see an episode to see people's reactions because I like to see reactions as they happen. That's sort of why I started doing this, these videos. Like, I like to see the genuine moment where people, like, react to something and, like, Dreadwing feels are abound all over Tumblr. Like, people are like, oh my gosh, Dreadwing, what's he gonna do now? Is he gonna waste Starscream? Is he gonna join the Autobots? Is he gonna, you know, I'm... Yeah, I don't know what Dreadwing's gonna do. He's gonna He's not very talkative. He's kind of an enigma. Uh, I sort of like that. <laughs> so I like when characters are like deep. Like they don't say much, but you could tell there's a lot of stuff going on in their heads or whatever. Um, yeah, like Soundwave. <laughs> Soundwave, I don't know if he's deep character or not. Honestly, we don't know anything about him, but you know, he never talks. Like, I don't like 
character can be talkative and be deep, but like being overly talkative, I guess, is where they say things that they don't really need to say that you could figure out by just watching them. Because uh, like TV shows are visual medium, people. We're supposed to be watching, not supposed to be listening too much. We're supposed to listen, but we're supposed to be mostly watching. Oh, what else do I want to say? Oh, yeah. So, this always happens whenever anything changes Transformers fandom, but some asshole on YouTube was complaining about, like, Beast Hunters is probably going to finish, feature, like, Predacons or Dinobots or Maximals, maybe, <laughs> or some kind of something that turns into animals, and they're like, no, don't go toward animals, that never works, and it, like, that, their exact quote, I kid you not, was, we don't need something like that to mess up this realistic war about Cybertron. You dumb. Fuck. A realistic war- realistic show about Summertime. Did you hear yourself say that? Out loud. I mean, what does realism have to do with Transformers? Fuck realism. This is a show where humans don't need- <laughs> This is a franchise where humans don't need helmets when they go into space. This is a franchise where Atlantis totally exists and is occupied by hologram people. This is a franchise where there are cat girl robot maids, okay? Realism has never been an issue in Transformers, okay? And frankly, I like it better that way. <laughs> I mean, no, realism, that's not a valid argument. Like, if you want to argue you don't like the way the direction the show is going because of something else, fine, but because it's not realistic? No. I, I have a friend who's like really into science and like probably is like, a, not probably, he's at an engineering school right now so he's definitely going to major in engineering. He's a really sciencey minded guy and I tried to explain to him way back when Transformers Prime first came out like a year or two ago. It was like spring 2011, was that when it was? Maybe? I don't know. Whatever it was, I was like trying to explain to him well there's like I was trying to explain the terracons. It's like there's robots and like they die and you resurrect them. He's like, That doesn't make sense. Robots can't die. You can't have a zombie robot. I'm like, well they have a spark and he's like, No, that doesn't work. I'm like, it's not supposed to be realistic. There you go. <laughs> it's about transforming robots. They turn into cars. Realism is not an issue. Now like there's certain things like I feel like Feelings should always be realistic because that's why fiction exists. We get feeling and emotion and um, character in its purest form. I feel like, I really feel like the focus of fiction is character. Like, feelings should be realistic. Like, if I were to punch someone in the face, like if I were a character and I punched another character in the face and the character said, Oh, thank you for punching me in the face. That was really nice of you. That's real, that's unreal, that's unacceptably unrealistic. I think like things in terms of physics or spectacle or um, setting that can be as unrealistic as you want, provided that you could still make it interesting. Go all out. Character, know that those interactions have to make sense or else we become, that's the word, disinterested, I guess. It's not really the word I wanted, but it's, it's good enough. Oh, so yeah, that's that rant. What else? Oh. Oh, knockout. Oh my gosh. I don't know what's gonna happen, guys. With that, Megatron found out about Knockout's treachery, so will it come up again? I'm not sure. I really feel like Megatron's planning something. Like, he wouldn't just let Starscream back. Maybe he's concerned. Maybe he's like, did see some useful qualities, but I don't feel like he'd let him back just because we're all in this together, men. We need to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. No. He's got something else, I think. That's that's the prediction. If I turn out to be wrong, you could write down Dragon Keeper was wrong again. But um, I feel like that's it's a party happening next door. Not a big part to make a party. You could totally tell them to make up. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh well, yeah, Megatron. He's got something. He's got something planned. Dreadwing's got something planned. Starscream. Has definitely got something planned. You know he does! I don't buy any of your bullshit, Starts Green. Oh, here's something. One memory I thought for sure that Megatron would see is Starscream helping RC. You guys remember that? It was like, it was one episode of Arachnid. Arachnid had trust tied RC upside down. Starscream comes along, and instead of killing her, he just cuts her down uh, to pay her back for not killing him earlier. 
Uh, I was kind of waiting for Megatron to see that one. He didn't. So either he bypassed it or maybe, um, you know, maybe it just won't come up again. But I felt like that was a really interesting moment that they didn't really address. And this was the perfect chance for it. So I don't know what's going on with that. Hmm. Oh, if we are going to Cybertron, and that's, I read the synopsis, it sounds like, and I saw the promo. It sounds like what's where we're going. So I want to see few characters of Trion, Shockwave. <laughs> okay, those two. I want to know what became of them. Pretty sure Shockwave isn't dead. Pretty sure Alpha Trion isn't dead. Kind of want to see them again. And, like, don't know anything about Season 3 at this point, other than it's got some sort of growling thing with claws. But I would like to see, like, maybe this season will be, like, totally out there. Like, maybe they're going to take risks and, like, do something new. Because I feel like the old battles... The Looking at Endless Desert is pretty boring. I feel like they said it in the desert because it was cheaper. Because <laughs> deserts don't have a whole lot of living things. They don't have a lot of troublesome trees or water to animate. So I feel like that was for animation purposes. Now the animation is better. Uh, I think I'd like to see some stuff, like, outside of Nevada. I would like to like them to like revive Cybertron and like not bring it flourishing back to the way it was because I don't think that can ever be accomplished or at least shouldn't be accomplished till the series comes to its final end. But I feel like it should they should like start reconstructing it like do like a Minecraft type thing if that makes sense where they like all alone with like I now fertile it's a robot it's a metal planet but whatever fertile rejuvenated revitalized whatever word you want to use with these bunny ear things, uh, planet, and, like, try to get it back up again, and, like, fight with the Decepticons over that, and I could have a lot of moments where you see this is what got us into this mess in the first place. Stop shooting at us, you ass. You're the ass. And, you know, that, that kind of stuff. I'd like, I'd like to see some more characters. I'd like to see Wheeljack back again, of course. Uh, I'm just really excited, and I, I just, this show is getting better and better, and I, I love that. I love that when that happens. Start good and end great. That's wonderful. <laughs> okay, um, I think I'm kind of out of things to say about this episode, so, yeah, Transformers, awesome. I'll see you guys next week.